What's so special about water? Heat can be stored in many materials. For example, eutectic salts like sodium sulfate decahydrate, commonly known as Glauber salts, give off about 50 BTUs of heat per pound when changing from liquid to solid at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. They take up less space than water for the amount of heat they store. So what's wrong with eutectic salts? Nothing. But water is still needed as a medium of heat exchange. Eutectic salts come sealed in plastic tubes. They are immersed in a storage tank of water to facilitate heat transfer. Here, they maintain a temperature close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit by releasing the latent heat of fusion while the salt crystallizes. In the liquid form, Clauber salts only have a heat capacity of about 0.2 BTUs per pound. So most of the heat from Glauber salt is released during the phase change. Ordinary water also releases the latent heat of fusion. This occurs around 4 degrees centigrade when ice crystals start to form. Unfortunately, the heat release occurs at a temperature too low to be practical for domestic heating. A practical application of freezing and thawing water involves global climate moderation. Let's hope our polar ice caps remain long enough to deal with the global warming problem. Once they are gone, the ocean temperatures will rise at an uncontrollable rate and climate-driven storms will be devastating. Life as we know it would be impossible without water because H2O provides an ideal solvent for so many chemical reactions. But there's another reason why water is so important. This has to do with its ability to store heat. If we take a close look at a water molecule, you'll notice two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to oxygen. Electrons from the hydrogen atoms are shared with oxygen but the sharing is not equal. These electrons spend most of their time spiraling around the oxygen side, leaving the hydrogen side positively charged. Water is an asymmetrical polarized molecule. This asymmetric polarity explains the crystalline nature of ice, but what about its high heat capacity? As you know, heat is a measure of molecular motion, like spinning, vibrating and stretching. The stretching frequency of the OH bond is in the IR range. In other words, OH bonds oscillate in response to heat. This is how most of the heat is stored in water. Ethylene glycol, a common automotive antifreeze, has two OH bonds that contribute to its heat transferability. Unfortunately, it's also toxic. For this reason, non-toxic propylene glycol is recommended for closed-loop solar hot water systems. Antifreeze additives are needed in cold climates to prevent damage to closed-loop collectors as well as the associated plumbing. But additives are not required in drain-back systems as long as the plumbing is properly sloped. In other words, water is the only substance needed to transfer heat from the sun in a heat storage facility as long as the storage space is not a major issue. To automate the heat transfer process, a differential controller is connected to a pump and activated when the temperature of the collector exceeds the temperature of the storage tank. Collecting heat from the sun is not rocket science. All you need is a collector, a storage tank, a pump, a differential controller, and water.